If you want to feel like you're on the cutting edge of 3D printing, if you want to be a part of building a better future for those who come after you, then the SV07 from Soval is for you. It's not for me, but you do you. Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and if you're new to 3D printing or just want something new to do with 3D printing, you're in the right place. I hope that you'll stick around, maybe join me on social media, maybe even join me on Discord, where I have a great community of people who are showing off the cool things that they're doing and helping each other get better 3D prints. Recently, whenever I review a 3D printer, there is always somebody who comments on that review that, oh, that 3D printer is so slow. We are living in a world now where if the 3D printers aren't going faster and faster and faster, if they're not promising accelerations that they can't actually do, if they're not trying to be, well, the Bamboo Carbon X1, then people don't even want to talk about them. Well, my experience with the SV07 is that it is indeed fast. It's not reliable, I can't trust it to finish a 3D print, but it'll get to its fail state real quick. Now, I do acknowledge that there are other people online who are having a good time with the SV07, and that's good for them. Unboxing went fine, mostly. I got it together, and it went together just as good as any other bed slinger 3D printer that I've ever done before. But the moment that I tried turning it on, nothing would happen. The SV07 has a fancy user interface with clipper on it, which I've disconnected. Don't think that you can move it over here on your own, though it does have a certain amount of room on its tether. But when I turned this machine on for the first time, this screen wouldn't turn on at all. It's got a little button on the side that they say you need to hold for one second. So I tried that, nothing. I held it for five seconds, nothing. Held it for eight seconds, nothing. 10 seconds, nothing. I messaged Soval about this and after a couple days, they got back to me and said, well, are the lights on the top lighting up? Now, I want to point out, the lights on the top here are completely unseeable when this is sitting in its cradle. They're pointed in a completely wrong direction. They're recessed under here. I don't know if they were on the first time that I turned this on, but after checking and after letting it rest for a couple of days, they were in fact on. So the screen was on. It should have worked. I pressed and held the button and it came right up all by itself. I don't know what was wrong with it at the time, but it seems to have gone away. But nevertheless, it was up and running and all I needed to do now was uh, calibrate it. Yeah, with this sort of 3D printer, you can't start a print right away. You have to first calibrate the acceleration. What you do is you get an accelerometer. And on this particular machine, you have to attach the accelerometer to the x-axis and to the y-axis at different times and calibrate each one separately. Now that's not a big deal, but it means that you can't leave the accelerometer on there and calibrate before every print. So if you take this 3D printer and move it from one place to another, another surface that might affect the acceleration, well, you're going to have to reattach the accelerometer. And how do you attach the accelerometer, you say? Well, it's real simple. All you have to do is unscrew a screw from the body of the 3D printer, use a different, slightly longer screw to screw the accelerometer onto your axis of choice, run your calibration, then unscrew the slightly longer screw, put the normal screw back in, then unscrew another screw from the other axis and attach it with, again, a slightly longer screw. Now, if having to remove and insert screws for a part that you're going to want to be able to put on and take off quickly seems odd to you, it seems odd to me too. It's the sort of choice that any engineer would go, oh, we need a quick attach and removing mechanism on there so that we can do this quickly. But no, they went the screw route. And while I'm sure that somebody is going to come up with a solution for this that will allow you to quickly add and remove your accelerometer to ship it in this state, again, that sort of thing is just not for me, but 
maybe there's somebody out there who's really looking for something to fix on their 3D printer. Well, there you go. Number one, we can make a quick add and release mechanism for the accelerometer. I think that would be a good thing. Then I leveled the bed, and this machine is also odd in the bed leveling because it has big screws for leveling the bed, but it also has a bed sensor. And you might think, we don't need both of them. One or the other is fine. However, these two actually work together. From the menu, you can tell it to level the bed. It will sense where the four corners are and tell you how much to adjust those screws so that you get a true level. I'm actually for this. This is okay to me. I love machines that check the level and then tell you how to fix it and make it better. Of course, you can do mesh bed leveling as well and have it check the level of the bed and adjust it during the print. You can do both. You can get as good a level as possible and then have it compensate for any slight warps that might be in the bed. Honestly, as weird as that sounds, I'm actually good with it. But then I ran into another problem. I could not find the USB stick that had test prints on it that I could run on this machine. And the contents of this USB stick were not available for download on Sovel's website at the time. I contacted them. They did get me those files so that I could start printing, but I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here. I did eventually find the USB stick. And I will say that they hit it in a very clever spot. On the front of the SV-07, there is a drawer. It is hidden. It blends in perfectly with the body of the 3D printer. Now, it's a beautiful place to put a drawer. It uses that internal space of the 3D printer that oftentimes doesn't have anything extremely well. But it was so well hidden that I had no idea it was there. And they don't mention a thing about it in the documentation. So if you get an SV-07, be sure to check out that little drawer on the front. And, you know, they could have made it a different color or more obvious or at least mentioned it in the unpacking documents that, hey, you're going to find the, the Allen wrenches that you need for this and other things right there in that drawer. Like, that would have been useful to mention. Just saying. But I was ready to start a test print, and the first test print that I ran off was this leveling test. The purpose of this test is to tell you whether you've got your Z offset set right, because even after leveling the bed, the nozzle and the probe might be at different levels, and you might not be able to tell. So I printed off this level test. And after adjusting the Z level during the print, I thought that I had it level enough that it was printing well enough, but I was seeing something odd. When the print was too squished, when it should have been sticking too well to the build plate, it was actually peeling itself off the build plate. Too squished and still not sticking to the build plate. That should have been a red flag for me because it is an omen for what is to come. And in fact, that first level test, after I thought that I got it right, did peel off the build plate and ended up wrapping around the nozzle. In fact, it stuck itself into the sock of the nozzle. And here I had another problem. Failures are no new thing for 3D printers, but on the SV-07, they have this big old shroud sitting around the 3D printer head, which is very cool. It provides a bank of LEDs and lights things up. You will notice, though, that my shroud is not on my SV-07, because in order to get at the failure, I had to remove this nozzle, or this shroud. Not a big deal. And then I had to move the bed up which turned out to be a big deal. Because the print was wrapped around the nozzle, I could not move the bed up because it wanted to home the bed before it would allow me to move at all. <sighs> now, that's a quirk of Clipper, not necessarily a quirk of this 3D printer, but it was frustrating. I couldn't move the bed up until I homed it, and I couldn't home it because there was a blob of plastic in the way. I had to heat it up and try to remove that blob of plastic within like a half an inch. But in the end, I eventually did it, got it all cleaned up, and decided for future access I would just not put the shroud on until it starts printing reliably. You will notice the shroud is still not on. I tried again, got the Z level right, got the level test to print successfully. So, when?
but I wanted to take it to the next level like I always do. For my level tests, I like to just take a cube in Cura, stretch it out to be the full size of the print bed, make it so it's only a half a millimeter thick, and then print a single layer on the print bed. And the first time that I printed this, it went weird. It wasn't entirely attached to the print bed. And in fact, it kind of like cascaded itself off the whole thing. Again, this should have been another omen. And I noticed that one corner of it was super messed up and wrinkly. Well, maybe I had the Z level a little bit too tight. And the reason why it was better on the rest of it was because I fixed it during the print. So after printing that one, I printed another one and got that super satisfying peel off the build plate. I ran a few more test prints. The Benchy that was on there seemed to work just fine. And sure enough, it's a zippy little machine when you get it calibrated and printed this Benchy within a half an hour. Pretty impressive. Then I printed one that was called Skull. This is not a skull. It's a very cool print, very pretty. I think this will be a, a great pen holder on my desk, but it's definitely not a skull. Not complaining though, it seems to have worked just fine. But looking at these two prints, it seems like there was a little bit of a shift in the y-axis that I didn't quite notice before. Ah, well, that's not going to be a big deal, is it? Now it was time to go to my old standby printer blocks. I printed a couple of test blocks and the first ones did not come out at all. I thought I had the level just right. Well, let's try it again. The second ones, they worked, kind of. The connectors were, again, not sticking to the build plate, but, I don't know, the, the blocks seemed to work okay. I adjusted the Z just a little bit again, printed some more of them, and they mostly worked, adjusted the Z, printed some more, and I got one that had everything sticking on the build plate. Whew, okay, I think we're good. Let's try a bigger set of printer blocks. Let's print the printer block articulated dragon model. So I loaded up one of the plates, tried printing it out, and again, nothing was sticking to the build plate. Failure after failure, it was getting frustrating. Now, I have to admit that I frequently have trouble with powder-coated, textured PEI build sheets. I don't know if it's a climate thing, environment thing. I don't know what the problem is. But even on my Prusa with its powder bed sheet, I have to apply liberal amounts of hairspray to get anything to stick to it reliably. And on this printer, it has a textured PEI build sheet. And I just wasn't getting anything to stick to it. I had tried leveling the Z enough times. It was time to put hairspray all over this build plate and try it again. That didn't work. Okay, when even the hairspray doesn't work, my only recourse is to get a new build plate. And I think if I were going to keep this machine, that is another upgrade that I would have to do. But during this time, I found out that my Z was going off level. The, the springs on this particular bed don't want to hold the level. They keep moving out of level. I had to re-level it from the screws at least three times during this process. So, okay, fine. I have to upgrade the bed and I have to upgrade the springs for the leveling of this bed. Sure, I'll just put that on the list. But for now, I'm going to apply painter's tape to the build plate to see if I can get anything to stick. Nope. Not even... Painter, fine, fine, uh, let's put some glue stick down on there. That worked. Painter's tape and glue stick was necessary to get anything to stick to the build plate on this machine. This is infuriating at this point. Okay, so the build plate, it's sticking. Finally, let's print out some printer blocks. And as I'm printing them, I'm getting Y-axis layer shifts. Sometimes they'd be fine. Sometimes I couldn't get through a print without having it shift forward and backward during the print. Ah! I thought 
maybe the acceleration was the problem here. Maybe it was going so fast that we were getting slippage on the belt or something like that, but I wasn't thinking straight. I wasn't realizing this machine has a Y-axis tensioner, which at the beginning of setting this up, I tensioned properly and it had loosened during the course of test printing. What is this machine? All right, note to self, I need to get a lock nut for the Y-axis tensioner so it doesn't slip. Do you see what I'm talking about? No one of these problems would be insurmountable. They are all things that I could fix. But taken in total, my experience with this machine is death by a thousand paper cuts. <sighs> I mentioned at the beginning of this review that bamboo has changed the game. Everybody is trying to get out a faster and faster machine and they're trying to get it out as quickly as possible. And the result of that is this. And again, I know that some people are having good experiences with this machine, but my experience with this machine is I don't care about speed. I would rather have a machine that I could use reliably. And the next time somebody messages me and says, oh, that 3D printer is so slow, my response will be, at least it prints. But like I said, these are problems that could be fixed. None of them are insurmountable. And somebody who has enough time and enough effort and the right parts could take this machine, fix it up, and have not only a good 3D printer that would print very quickly, but a project that they could take pride in, something that they did, something that they would have a deep emotional connection to. Somebody could do that. Somebody, not me. Because when I get a 3D printer, I want it to 3D print. And if upgrades or fixes are important, I want those to be down the road. I want a good opening experience. And so far, for me, the SV07 hasn't been that. But if you're the sort of person who maybe got an Ender 3 and upgraded it to its max level, and now you're looking for something else to work on, well, here you go. Like not every print was a failure, but layer shifts on the hinge means I can't even bend it, it's worthless. Well, I wanna thank you very much for watching, and I want to remind you that you're a child of God and you're special to me, so take care of yourself, and if you can, someone else too. Thank you very much for watching.